Hey, what's up everybody and welcome to another aesthetic imaging video tutorial. Today we're going to be taking a look at how we can create this glitch text effect. Now it's not just for text, you can also use it on uh, video clips and assets and stuff like that. This episode was actually suggested by Amans Kumar, uh, I hope I pronounced that right. Please make another glitch text tutorial. If you have other stuff that you want to see, uh, feel free to leave a comment and make a suggestion. And as usual, the project files will be available to download so you can follow along. Uh, we're going to leave a link in the description to that. So we're going to be taking a look at four different factors that go into making this text glitch. We're going to be looking at color shift, distortion, blur, and position. All right, so let's get started. All right, so first thing we're gonna do to get started here is we're gonna create a new composition. We're gonna make this 1920 by 1080 and uh, 23.976 frames per second and about 10 seconds long, that's fine. And we're gonna hit okay. And here we go, our new composition. So over in this blank little space, we're gonna right click, go to new text. And we're gonna type in glitch text. We'll do two lines. All right, well, maybe let's go into our character. I'm using Orbitron for this. This is available on the Adobe website in their font uh, selection. And I'm using the bold option. Maybe make that a little bit bigger, just so we have more uh, surface area to work with. And of course, let's force some bold on there. Align this, and then uh, you can actually align it by going up the Align panel. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure this layer is selected. I'm going to hit Shift-Command-C. Or you can go up to Layer, Precompose, and we're going to call this Image Holder. Put a little underscore in between, and uh, hit OK. All right, so let's start off with the color shift. And to do that, we're going to create a new solid, and we're going to call this Color Shift. So on top of our color shift, let's go to Effects and Presets, and let's put on a Fractal Noise. And here it is under noise and grain, fractal noise. Let's just add that on top of our color shift. Now we're going to be actually using a lot of uh, fractal noise for this. So let's turn this uh, fractal type from basic to turbulent smooth. Let's take the noise type and turn that to block. And let's bump up the uh, contrast just a little bit. Maybe turn down the brightness just a little bit. All right, so now we're going to twirl open our transform. We're going to uncheck uniform scaling because if we just do scale here, everything scales up normally. Now, let's uncheck that. So now we have an option for scale width and scale height. Scale width, we're going to bring that up. Now, if you notice, you only go up to 600 on this slider. We want just a little bit more. So you can actually uh, click on the number, uh, click and drag on the number, drag it to the right, and we can go past that little 600 arbitrary uh, wall here. Anyway, and let's turn down the scale on the height. And we want to give this some animation through the evolution. Now we're going we're gonna to go crazy with it. We're going to alt click on the stopwatch. We're going to type in time times 1000. All right, so we can click out of here to set that, and now we have this crazy thing going on here. So that is that part done. Maybe let's uh, bring this down even more. All right, so we wanna come back to our effects and presets and put on a levels adjustment. All right, under color correction, levels. And we kinda of wanna squish this in more towards the middle, but not quite. There we go, something like that. All right, so now let's create another new solid and we're gonna call this color shift matte. And we're gonna add another fractal noise, noise and grain, fractal noise, add that on top of our color matte, color shift matte. All right, like the first one we did, we're gonna take the fractal type, turn it to uh, turbulent smooth, noise type, we're gonna turn that to block, now we're going to turn up the contrast and turn down the brightness just a bit. 
Under Transform, let's uncheck Uniform Scaling, and we're not going to scale it up as much as the first one. Something like this. And of course, we want to add an expression to our evolution again. Time. Oh, time times 1500. How about that? Alternatively, if you have a number pad on your keyboard, you can hit the enter key on that number pad to uh, get out of that expression. So now we have this, which is insane, right? Uh, let's add another levels. Color correction, levels. Let's uh, squish that down. Something like this. Now let's also create a new adjustment layer. And we're going to call this posterize time. And we're going to add a posterize time. So that is under time, posterize time. We're going to add that to our uh, aptly named layer. And we're going to set the frame rate to be eight. And now we have more of this uh, uh, kind of stepping motion rather than actual smooth animation. And each frame will be different. All right, let's take our posterized time and color shift mat and let's pre-compose them. Shift command C and we'll call this uh, color shift mat, the same as the layer. And let's put underscores in between here. Whoop. Oh, stop it. All right. We got there. Color shift mat. Now we want to set the color shifts track mat to luma mat. All right. So now that we have this, um, so this color shift mat is including part of our uh, color shift and making it so that only certain parts are visible. So if we turn this off, you can see how there's some transparency and there's just blocks of this uh, distortion. So now we have this going on. Let's take our color shift and color shift mat and let's pre-compose them. And we'll call this color underscore shift. All right. So now we only want this layer to show up or to only affect our text and not be visible on this background. In order to do that, we can take this preserve underlying transparency and turn it on. That way, it will only show up where there's an alpha channel. Now, this isn't very uh, color glitch now, is it? So what we're going to do is we're going to go over to our effects and presets and we're going to add a tritone a tritone. Let me try that again. <laughs> oh, man, I, I cracked myself up. All right, so, so we're going to add our tritone on top of our color shift. Now you can see we have some color being affected. I mean, you could do red, green, and blue. Let's just do red, green, and blue. Like that. Now, we want to kind of uh, blend this in with the original text. So what we can do, what we can do to make some pretty interesting um, effects. I mean, we could always just do overlay or something like, you know, I don't know, multiply, I don't know, whatever you want. Uh, what we're going to do, subtract and it's going to subtract those colors. When you subtract red, green, and blue, uh, you get the opposite colors, uh, yellow, cyan, and magenta. So let's just flip these. Let's do yellow and cyan and magenta. All right, so now we have a kind of a red, green, and blue glitch going on here. Now, another thing we want to do here is let's go into our color shift. Let's go into our color shift mat. And right here under our color shift mat layer on the keyboard, let's hit T for transparency. And let's alt click on that stopwatch and do wiggle parentheses. 
maybe like uh, 15 times a second uh, with a value of 100. So every uh, every second, it's going to do 15 random generated numbers between 100 and 0, basically. So that way we have some variance in uh, uh, opacity. See so if we uh, if we maybe slow this down, see what happens. So basically, what we're keeping in mind with this glitch is just everything is kind of randomized. Nothing is completely on or off at the same time. You know, it's just going to be chaos because that's what glitching is. All right, so we play this back. We can see we got some nice little weird color shiftings. Now our next step is to get this distortion that we got going on here. And the way we're going to do that is pretty simple. We're going to go, we're going to select our image holder because we're going to put this below our color shift. We're going to go new adjustment layer. And we'll call this distortion. And on top of that, we're going to put on a turbulent displacement. That is under distort turbulent displace. So let's take our displacement type and bring that to horizontal displacement. So that way it only goes side to side and not up and down. Now we're going to turn down our size quite a bit and turn up our amount to be eh, something pretty big, pretty huge. Maybe turn the complexity to two. Uh, evolution. Let's get some evolution in here. Alt click on the stopwatch. We're going to do time times uh, 1000. Now, like our color shifts, we only want this to appear in certain areas. So, what we can do is create another mat. So, let's go new solid and we'll call this dist mat. And we're going to add a fractal noise. All right, so we're going to take our fractal noise and we're going to add that to our distortion mat. Now we're going to leave this at basic, but we're going to change the noise type to spline. And let's bring up the contrast. And maybe bring down the brightness. Something like that, maybe. Transform, let's uncheck uniform scaling. Make this a little bit wider than it is taller. And for our complexity, let's turn that down to 3.5. And evolution, time times 1000. All right, so on top of our fractal noise, let's add another levels. And we're just going to squish this in. All right, so distortion. We want to set that track mat to a luma mat. Let's put on a posterized time. Let's do it. Add it right in there. Set that to eight. There we go. So that was more glitchy and jumpy. And so now we can add our color shift back in. All right, let's try some image positions going on here. All right, so we're going to take our image holder and we're going to duplicate it. And let's turn off the bottom one for now so we can see what we're going to be doing. Let's create a, another new solid. Let's call this position map. And actually, what we want to do is take our image holder, hit P on the keyboard for position, alt click on that stopwatch, and put in a wiggle expression. So wiggle, parentheses, maybe about uh, three times a second. We'll, we'll just play around three times a second with a value of 20. Let's see what this does. Uh, a little faster. Maybe try like uh, 10 times a second. There we go. And 20 seems to be a good, uh, seems to be a good number. 
All right, so let's go back to our position mat. And we're going to put on a fractal noise. Noise and grain, fractal noise. Dump that onto our position mat. All right, so we're going to take this uh, fractal type. We're going to set it to turbulent smooth and set this to block again. Let's turn on our mat so we can see what we're doing. And let's turn off our distortion and color shift. So let's turn up our contrast and turn down our brightness like we have with all the other ones. Uh, complexity, we'll leave at six. Evolution, you guessed it, time times 1,000. And let's add another levels. And squish it down. Maybe even less. There we go. So of course you're using the uh, the white to turn our effects on, and the black will be turned off. All right. Uh, what else are we gonna do? Let's uh, take our transform, uncheck uniform scaling, make me make it a little bit bigger than it, or taller than it is wider, or wider than it is taller. You know, you get the point. Uh, all right, maybe another posterized time. Let's do another posterized time, you know, add that onto our position mat. Set that to eight. Eight frames per second, basically. Now we can take our image holders track mat and let's set that to a luma mat. But we have a problem. Our original is not a visible. So we can turn on our original here. But the problem is we want our original image to uh, uh, disappear where the position is visible. In order to do this, we can just take our position mat, duplicate it by hitting Command D, moving that above our image holder, and instead of setting this to Luma mat, we set it to Luma mat inverted. So now we're getting some really cool effects going on here. You can see uh, certain parts will not just not show up, sort of, and maybe sort of show up, and then yeah, we just get all kinds of crazy randomness, which that's what a glitch is. So this is our basic effect. It looks pretty neat, pretty nifty. Now, uh, if you notice at the beginning, I said there were four factors that go into this. Color shift, distortion, and position but also blur. Now this I actually ended up leaving out. Yeah, I ended up leaving that out on this original one. As you can see, I'd left that out. I don't know. I think I didn't I, I didn't really like it, but then I forgot that I left it out when I started this tutorial. Um, but anyway, I'll show you how I did it. So above our position mat, but below our distortion, let's add a new adjustment layer. And we're going to add a blur. Uh fast box blur. There it is, under Blur and Sharpen. Who would have thought? All right, so let's rename this adjustment layer to Blur. All right, so we got our fast box Blur. Let's turn on Repeat Edge Pixels just for the sake of it. And let's, let's turn up the Blur Radius just a bit. Just a bit, maybe five. I don't know. All right, so we're going we're gonna, to uh, make things a little bit easier. And we're going to take our distortion mat. We're going to duplicate that again, Command D, and we're going to put that above our blur. Now we're just going to go in and change some settings just to get a different uh, feel. Maybe set this to three. I don't know. Uh, under evolution, let's let's uh, go down here. Just make sure our distort mat is. Uh, uh, we changed the name. Let's make sure we change the name. Yeah, blur mat. All right. So now we're going to take our blur adjustment layer. And we're going to set that track mat to Luma mat. Now it's going to be blurry wherever it's distorted. We don't really want that. So let's let's select our blur mat. Double tap U on the keyboard to bring up all the changes that we made. And let's change this to one. Let's change this to 1500. And maybe do plus, I don't know, like 100. So that way, this little spinny wheel will start off at a value of 100 degrees and then move forward. So 
And that way it'll be completely different from our distortion map. So we don't have that overlap. Now, some parts may overlap every now and again, but you know. All right. So, yeah, I, I, I didn't really like it. I didn't like it. Maybe if we, you know, just turn down the blur a bit. Make it more subtle, I guess you could say. I am going to uh, just leave this off, you know. All right. So now, uh, uh, the thing with glitches, it's not always on, you know, and we got this constantly on glitching thing. All right. Our footage is in bad shape. Let's, uh, let's have some moments of non glitchiness. So, on top of everything, let's add some controls to add some more, even more randomization uh, to our glitch. We're going to go new adjustment layer. And we're going to call this glitch uh, CRTL control. Man, I always do that. I always. Mm, fat fingers. All right. Glitch control. And what we're going to do, we're going to add a checkbox control. And that is under expression controls, checkbox control. We're going to add that on there. So we're going to add a checkbox for the color shift and the distortion. But then we're going to add, uh, well, let's just do that. Color viz for visibility. All right, let's take this, uh, let's take this effect, this checkbox effect, and let's command D to duplicate it. Let's rename this to dist viz. And we also want to control this position. But to do that, we're going to add a, a slider control. And we're going to pop that down on that. And we're going to do pose val for value, position value. And we're not going to do one for the blur because we don't need to. Once you do these two, you'll know how to do the blur. It'll be the same way. Plus, I don't like the blur. It doesn't look that great to me, I say. So what we want to do is we want to lock up this effects panel, lock it up. We're going to go to color shift. We're going to hit T for transparency. And we're going to alt click on that opacity. We're going to type in if parentheses. Then we're going to take this little pick whip and we're going to bring it over to that checkbox for the color viz. And then we're going to do equals equals one. And that parentheses, 100, else, zero, and end that line. So now our color shift has disappeared. Now if we check this on, it reappears. So now what we can do on our color visibility checkbox, we're going to alt click on that stopwatch. I'm going to type in wiggle, two for two times a second, and a value of one. All right, so if we play this back. You can see sometimes it just disappears. Sometimes it just disappears. And you can play around with these values. Five times a second, make it more flashy. You know, the faster, the faster uh, this speed is, obviously, the more flashy it's going to be. Uh, let's bring that down to... We're going to down, down the one again. Why not? All right, let's move on to the distortion visibility. So what we're going to do, let's just take this um, expression that we made and hit Command C to copy it. Let's turn down our thing. So we're going to select our distortion, hit T to bring up opacity, and we're going to Alt-click on that stopwatch, and we're going to paste what we copied right in there. So we're going to select from this comp all the way to that parentheses right there just before the double uh, equal sign. And we're going to take our pick whip and we're going to whip it and pick it to the checkbox of our distortion. Now, much like our color visibility, if we check this on, it turns on. Cool. So again, alt click on the checkbox uh, stopwatch here. We're going to type wiggle, 
parentheses, and we'll do two, mm, comma, one. All right, now, so now our distortion is also uh, a randomized. Now, the only thing that's different is going to be our position value. All right, so let's go to our second image, our, our uh, moving image holder, the one that has that little expression on it. Let's select this, select our 20, and pick whip it to the slider. And add another parentheses at the end there to cap it off. There we go. Now you see it's not moving because this is set to zero. But as we move this, oh, look at it moving away. Bye bye. All right. So what we want to do is actually go, uh, we want to alt click on the slider, stopwatch, and type in another wiggle expression. A wiggle for the wiggle. And maybe do maybe do uh, let's try five times a second as an experimental thing and a value of uh, ten. Let's do a value of twenty, and let's speed this up about ten times a second. And like I said, if you want to add that blur back in there, uh, you would basically do it the same way you did the checkboxes here. All right, so let's go into our image holder. And the cool thing about this is uh, it's all done procedurally, which means I could uh, maybe get rid of this. It doesn't have to only work with just text. You can also do video footage. So here we have our download the project files to follow along. Maybe shorten that comp go back to our main comp here to where this disappears and hit n to shorten the comp as you can see this effect can apply to anything that you put inside this image holder that's why we called it image holder not text holder because it can hold images as well of course you can go into all these settings like say maybe the distortion just play around with it have fun you can even add some wiggle expressions to the amount and the size and stuff like that. Just whoop. let's go nuts. All right, so that's basically it. And like I said, the project files will be available for download if you want to follow along. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.